thank you for watching this video subscribe to my channel i want to remind you about something today and first of all if you're following christ keep on going i'm cheering you keep on going keep walking by faith keep operating in the supernatural listen to the following here when god prohibits something it is because there is some harm or some danger or some kind of trap along the way that you don't see and because you can't see it because because there are things you can't see just admit it okay your vision your physical vision as a human being is limited yes you can notice things and your brain is quite intelligent as a machine but still there are things you can't notice your brain can be tricked and apart from the physical body you as a spirit being your capacities are limited that's obvious so there are things you can't know and there are things you can't see and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with being vulnerable and weak in some areas weaknesses are natural as vulnerability as your vulnerability is a natural thing there's nothing wrong with that the world tells, tells you otherwise but the world is deceived so when god prohibits something and i'm not talking about scripture here there are times in your daily walk by faith that the Holy Spirit will say no against certain things. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you, uh-uh, but there are times the Holy Spirit will not tell you, and the Holy Spirit will just frustrate an outcome. When the Lord says no, it is because, first of all, just realize that the Lord is faithful. He cannot lie. So there's no corruption or darkness in him. So he has no selfish unkind or principal motive like human beings do or evil spirits do when he says no it is because there's something down the line that's not worthy of you just hear what i'm saying here let's say that i'm going to give a very graphical ex example now let's say you have this girl this young girl of not girl okay young lady 17 years old and she comes home and says, Dad, I found the horse. The father saying, Oh, you found the horse? Let me see it. And then when the father arrives and sees the horse, the father is shocked. The animal, it is a horse indeed, but it's sick. It has all kinds of infections. And the animal is also a bit aggressive. So the father is shocked and says, Daughter, please come with me. And the father moves the daughter from that horse. Now, what has happened here? Well, there's something wrong with her finding a horse. Let's say they live in an agricultural community where horses are bred. Is there anything wrong with her, with her, with her wanting to have a horse for herself and wanting to have a pet? No, there's nothing wrong with that. The father said no because what she was bringing home was dead, dead in disguise. That animal either would have infected her with a, a physical illness, with a physical disease, I mean, but, uh, or the animal would have malfunctioned when she rode on it and she would have got hurt, wounded, or even died. Because horses, when they're out of their mind, when horses lose it, they kill people and each other. Yes, it doesn't happen every day, but it happens. So the father now, who look at the bigger picture realize ah 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 there's something going to happen oh let's say now and this is this this following example i'm going to give is more it's not a realistic example but it's still a symbolic illustration let's say um you have a young guy who, who is 14 years old and he wants to marry start his own family and he wants to uh he just wants to be part of the adult world. At least he thinks adult world is great. People have everything figured out. People are well married, all of that. That's the impression he has as a 14 year old. He doesn't see the truth. So based on the criteria of his society, he finds a potential mate. And he comes home to his parents and says, mom, dad, I found the woman for my wife. So the parents think, oh, okay, let us hear. And then he says, ah, oh, this is her. Hey. Elisa, these are my parents. My parents, this is Elisa. And the parents look at her and... And this is a symbolic illustration, okay? This is not to insult anyone, but they look at 
the, the creature. And what they see is a big, dirty swine with worms crawling all over its, its skin. The, the swine is there's, uh, there, there's, there's a slime and all those dirt coming out of the mouth. And the swine is also kind of agitated, so it's about to attack. It looks aggressive. And then the parents see the son being so excited and so happy. And the parents thinking, oh dear. Now, that illustration is symbolic, okay? I'm not calling every, I'm not calling anyone a swine here, neither am I. I don't think you don't get what I'm saying here. It's just a symbolic illustration. Neither am I'm not telling you to compare people to what I just said in that parable. It's just a parable, a symbolic illustration to teach you something. But what would those parents do? Those parents would obviously see that their son has an issue, that their son doesn't see things straight. They obviously would tell the son, get that pig out of here. It's not coming into our house. And the parents would lock up the child and, and talk to the child, it means their son, in order to redirect him. Now, obviously, no teenage boy is coming with a hawk at home wanting to marry it, okay? A literal physical hawk. No, nobody does that. Well, at least I, I hope nobody does that. But spiritually, and forget about looking for a partner, forget about, forget about that subject, because most people lose themselves in that subject. In general, the world has conditioned you to think in a certain way. That way of thinking has diverse outlets, but the same, same, same way of thinking, which is self-validation. Some societies are more hard in it, ours are more soft, ours are more masculine, ours are more feminine, it doesn't matter, it's all self-validation, it's how the world has trained you. And when you operate in this way of thinking, you will notice facts, and, but, and you can act upon facts and things will work out externally. But it is a trap. Why? Because you can't process things the right way. Look, if I give someone a file with a movie in 4K quality, but they have a computer, a Windows 95 computer, which can only process things in black and white, the, I mean the software that plays the, the video, and it can't even handle things above uh, 480K quality, but now you have a 4K in depth movie with great sound quality, but you wanna but you wanna process it with a Windows 95 um, hardware. Anyone that is even an amateur in computer science or even a geek of high school in their early teens can tell you, uh, uh uh, don't do this. That machine cannot handle this depth, this quality, and this greatness. And that is how it often goes with believers also. We received the programming of the world, and that's all we knew. Even many people in church, many people that confess Christ also have this way of thinking, but in the name of Christ, so we can't see that something doesn't add up. So, and that, that, and that way of thinking, those worldly methods, they work, they do. But there are side effects you don't see. And here's the thing, because it's not in line with Christ, it opens yourself up to evil spirits. And that's the thing we often don't see. And so sometimes the, the Holy Spirit will even prohibit you or stop you from doing the right thing. For example, let's say someone just cuts you off on social media. And you think, what happened? You are were on good terms with the individual. You even hung out with them. Of course, it's natural that you ask what's going on. That's the right thing to do. But there are times when the Spirit will not allow you to do the right thing. You know why? Because that individual that suddenly cuts you off, he or she, it's being used by Satan to, to draw you in the negative. It's natural and it's the right thing for you to ask what's going on and, and to sort things out. That's, that's not wrong with that, absolutely not. However, the enemy is using that good instinct of yours to trap you. Because that other individual, Satan has, Satan can have, Satan has access to him or her directly and that's why Satan has caused an individual with eight of his demons to turn on you. So now that you go after that individual, you're now involved in the negativity of that individual, and that's how demons lure you and trap you, to eventually destroy you and kill you. So when God says no, trust him. That being said, agree with Christ and be at peace.